So most commonly architects use 2D plans, elevations and sections to design their buildings. But the problem is that architecture is a 3D medium, so it kind of makes sense to also design in 3D whenever it's possible. But how do we move from 2D drawings that are very easy and fast to set up to designing in 3D? Well, this video is going to focus exactly on that. I'll share with you some of my approaches and thoughts and techniques on how I think about this problem and how I design in 3D. Okay, so there are a couple of approaches I'm going to show you. The first one is how to use plan to visualize space in 3D. It's quite a straightforward way to do that. And here I have an office conversion plan. This is the space I'm going to try to visualize because it's quite an awkward one. It has three out of its four walls taken by doors and windows. It's also quite awkwardly proportioned space. It's very long. So to resolve that sort of space is I just simply draw an outline of the floor plate. And then I also pull a couple of lines up. I might also sometimes dot in the fourth wall just for a little bit of context and then I can show the position of the doors on this. And now I can start testing my furniture layouts. Again, the speed is the most important part here, so I'm not going to dwell on the quality of how I draw furniture. I'll just literally draw a couple of boxes in. This one is going to represent the couch and this box over here is going to represent the table. On this side, I can have a TV, which will receive its own little box for a stand, TV itself. And then maybe lastly, we'll have a, some kind of plant pot in a corner. The sofa can be embellished a little bit, so maybe we'll have an L shape show the back as well which will be just a smaller cube on top of the the first volume perhaps a couple of paintings a carpet could also add some interest i can also try some other views if i want to see for example this wall here this time i'll try to visualize the floor plate in the opposite direction the door on this side and then a couple of windows on the opposite with radiators underneath and again, essentially what you can see I'm doing here with all of these drawings is I can only pull lines in three directions, either this one, up, or this one, Z, Y, and X. So if I had to visualize a cube, for example, this is how I would do it. And then if I need to put extra extrusions, I can use the faces of that cube to proceed the same way. So this is exactly what I do here. I can then put my sofa, for example. Again, you can see it's totally wrong scale. However, the point is, is not the scale, but actually the problem that this reveals. You can instantly see that sofa is covering the radiators behind. If I put the flower here, it kind of helps with the vibe, but really, you know, those windows at the back are not great. And then if I put my table, and I could put some chairs as well around it, notionally, that you can see instantly the constraints the space has. And then lastly, I can visualize the perspective view as well. So I always start with the trapezoidal shape first. As a starting point for the perspective, I'll draw the table first, a couple of chairs. And once that's done, I can then do the same trapezoidal shape that goes towards the vanishing point, which would be roughly here, judging by the sides of the table. And that would be my sofa. It's kind of tucked behind, it's a little bit hard to see, but again, the same principle. Elevation, it's kind of like an L shape and then extruded towards the vanishing point behind that a window and another window closer to me and to the table radiator on the bottom top of the room and i could put this flower pot back in as well it allows me to then draw another couple of lines just to get the location of the door and then just kind of finish this drawing off by having the tv stand Perspective looks a little bit off, but that's okay because the point is just to have this first pass and see how this space feels. That's looking pretty kind of decent. You know, I could start tracing over it to make it a little bit more pretty, but also to test the position of the furniture a little bit more. Okay, the second approach involves using imagination rather than plans. And typically when I design something, I try to understand what elements I want to see. So in this particular case, what I want to see is probably some kind of colonnade and maybe two story high void or or a foyer. So to start visualizing what I see, I'll start with these basic elements first. So the colonnade is going to be the starting point. After that, I can then put two lines over that to indicate the floor. I maybe can put another line just to delineate maybe a surface and material change. So that we have something in the middle is useful as a guide for this atrium opening that goes around. Could continue my colonnade, for example, all the way through. And uh, so the colonnade kind of goes there. And then, for example, put a couple more lines above that just to have a sense of that there's a second floor plan, perhaps a railing. And then this opening at top floor can actually extend out over the first floor opening. And I think I could probably make this a bridge. 
and perhaps I'll align the top opening with the end of the bottom one by extending the edge of the upper level. And you know, that's kind of how I start forming the space. I might put some more balustrades here. Again, it looks quite rough and ready at the moment, but I think it's a good starting point. What I can do now, it becomes to be quite limiting. I don't have any more ideas of what to put in that space. So I'll proceed with perhaps a view of this. So to do that, I'll be looking towards this kind of imaginary pane in front. And I'll draw that first, and then I'll draw the line where the colonnade will go. So like over here. So once the colonnade is drawn, put the balustrade in and you can see here, I'm not kind of worried about what's going on around. I'm just kind of trying to do an element at a time and do the same with this balustrade here. Perhaps continue the colonnade as I have it in my axonometric drawing all the way to the back wall. So this kind of wall here at the back and then add the bridge and pull another line towards it to show where the top floor is. I think it's a bit too high, so I'll make it lower and then finish off on this side like so. Okay, and then I can add my surface texture too, just to coordinate with the axle. And once that's in, do a kind of complementary uh, skylight opening above. And again, this demonstrates just how valuable it is sometimes to change the vantage point and direction of the perspective because it's not something I could see on this axle so it's really useful that I can do that as an addition and again once that's done maybe I could embellish this with some more details maybe I'll have colonnade extending up uh, on a first floor you know these colonnades below and perhaps the rhythm is every second colonnade is picked up rather than every other one as on the ground so we have um, a kind of al alternating rhythm here I could just finish this little bit more lines and perhaps I could also do another view, which would be an elevation of that or kind of a section of 3D of this arrangement. Again, I'm not trying to like draw the whole space entirely. All I'm thinking about is, okay, I'm going to start with this bridge here, which is this. It's going to be cut section, so you'll have a rectangle. And then somehow it's going to want to go towards the vanishing point. It's on this kind of left side, so that's why I'm starting from there and then it meets the floor plate. Floor plate will have like kind of a notional thickness with the subdivisions of kind of every other colonnade on the top level. And then with that, I'll draw the upper floor. I still don't quite know what it does. I think on this drawing here, I have, I have that skylight. It's gonna probably be positioned somewhere here, hopefully in line with the structure. If this goes towards vanishing point, that opening, then it should meet uh, these points which are the structure so and actually I'm not gonna finish that hole I'm gonna cut the section through it and again shading the bits that are cut and then finally perhaps drawing a box over for the actual skylight a kind of thicker line to delineate the cut point okay so this starts looking quite good it's a bit busy but that's okay I do I have run out of space a little bit, but that's again fine because I can kind of encroach on that drawing a little bit. And so here where you can see the columns kind of stop at the ground level, the same way as we have this line above, which delineates the ceiling line, I can have another line offset from the bottom of the columns behind them to then delineate where the floor behind is. I have this railing here, so I'll put that in as well just for continuity. And then I can also add floor bit in front with different material. And then finally figure out that last bit as well in the same spirit will be cut through and filled like the bridge. There is obviously the railing as well, so I don't want to miss that out. So that's where my post is going to be. I'm just going to continue the ceiling cut to meet the wall and then where it meets the wall there's a corner over here I need to figure out actually where the ceiling behind this colonnade is at the first level so I think it's just behind there and I'll sketch that in the ground itself can be drawn in 
think this is a quite a good start for a kind of rough idea that I simply had from having a colonnade and then some sort of opening atrium type of thing that turned from this into this and then finally into this and again this can be embellished a bit more you can go into details you can test other arrangements and you can make it a bit more presentable if you like this video and you like the stuff that I'm making then why not subscribe to my newsletter that I release weekly it's a chance to not miss any future videos and it's just a good way to keep in touch so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one